Island in beautiful Florida. Are you as excited to be here as I am? Yeah. Now, a lot of you are newbies. How many of you are new? Oh, it's fantastic. Welcome to our family. We had such a great time at the show, and you are our proud gold customers. We appreciate you so much. So you get this special segment. We're going to bring out the big dogs now. Are you excited? It's the big dogs. These guys are multi hyphenates okay? They're producers, directors, actors, executive producers. One of them is Soldier Boy. One of them is Walker, Texas Ranger. Oh, yeah, and there's Sam and Dean. Come on, you guys. Give it up. John Kamaraki and Jensen Eccles. Let's go to Jensen and Jeremy. First question, honest question, who didn't uh, correct their clock and who got here? <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday weekend! She just turned 21. Happy 21. Uh, wait, aren't, aren't 21 year olds supposed to be like so good at uh, technology that you should be telling us about correcting clocks? Come on now. Uh, good morning, y'all. Wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like double checking my phone. Uh, thank y'all for bringing us out here. Uh, we're very excited. It's obviously been very, uh, well, I haven't had a job, as is made clear by my <laughs> fur vest. I have job. Apologies. I haven't lived with, with this. I don't, this is it's awful. I got my choice. <laughs> I really need the strike dance so I can get my hair cut. Yeah. Uh, I know, right? Um, but, is that, yes. That, what did she say? She's like, is that what's stopping you? That's. <laughs> I'm going to give you 20 bucks and be like, go oh, buy some scissors. My wife, the other day, my wife the other day, she was like, how long we go with this? <laughs> I'm like, shut your mouth. I had this during. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I had this. You'll get better at it, don't worry. Give it like 15 uh, seasons. I had this conversation with Jen. Um, during COVID, I didn't shave at all. And I, after I finally trimmed down to get ready for the, the, the show that he and I worked on together. Uh, I was flipping back through pictures, and I just saw a picture of me with this massive, smelly-looking, nasty beard. And I'm with Jen. Why is it smelly and nasty? What do you mean? You can still shower when you, you can't have a shower beard. beer. You yes, can't. You can. No, I, I think I'm true. Listen, there was a there was a, a beard on this face for a particular role that became its own. I think it had its own zip code. <laughs> I didn't get an extra cell phone for it. I did, oh, yeah, yeah. made phone calls. You had to put it in there. I just stuck it in there. Um, it had, I had more products for the stupid beard than I did for any other part of my body, which is much. But, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a thing. Fair enough. All right, I'll, I'll look in the shower unit. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, beard wash. A separate beard shower. But I, I was looking at pictures like two months later when I was back to presentable. And I looked around and I was like, you love me. She goes, yeah? And I was like, no, no, look at this picture. You stayed with me. You love me. So like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post it today. I, it looks like a mountain man that's like stolen some little uh, innocent girl. Uh, and it's going to hit your phones today. So I'm gonna uh, anyways, before we just talk about beards. Um, what's going on, y'all? I'm going to choose first question. So let's see. Yeah, that was quick. Let's do it. Yeah. That was quick. She also has a massive lens on her camera, and still her arm was just like, ba dunk. Hey, quiet back there. We think we're famous. I know we're on strike. So, can I re answer a question at the podcast? And I want to turn it back around to you. It was basically how has the men, the actors in this group of people, affected them? In Society. I want to put it back on you. How has Kripa the movie? Said that? No, Kim and Bree. 
During the podcast. During the podcast. Tim. Yeah. Tim and Kim. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so how has been working with the women in this fandom, or not fandom, but in this group of actors, affected you in a male-dominated society? Interesting question. Um, I, I gotta listen to it. Is it is it one of the reasons? It was what they filmed on Friday. Amazing. Wait, what did they say about me? <laughs> What was it? How working with y'all yeah. has yeah. affected, changed how they work in a male-dominated world? Yeah. Well, well, they, how did how did it how did they say it, it affected them? Why reminds one of them? What did they say? It was all good. It was all good. It was all good. Very I think one of the things that uh, I'm really proud of that the show we worked on did, in my opinion, very well, is um, kind of pointed out how strong you are and you can be, no matter what you look like, whether you're male or female, black or white, gay or straight, blonde or brunette, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so having done the show from age 22 to age 38, it was awesome not just with the characters that are written, but to meet people like Kim Rhodes, Brain of Master, Felicia Day, uh, Genevieve, yeah. Cortez, now that one. Um, so it was uh, Daniel, um, but to see people, because it, it's being on a set, male or female, or however you want to identify, um, it's difficult. You know, it's, it's not like, oh, we all go play pretend, and it's lollipops and candy canes. It's shitty hours, you're, and I told this story the other day, for those who don't know, um, in an episode called Bugs of a TV show, I can say Bugs, right? Because I didn't write it. Yeah, I'm gonna say Bugs. <laughs> it was the, f the first season. Hey, I love your friend Rush on the phone. First time that it rained torrentially in Vancouver, and we were filming outside. I'm wearing like Pumas that are basically made of saran wrap. I thought you lost that shoe. That shoe? <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> I still have it, I still have it. Uh, and so, Kim Manners was directing and he gave us umbrellas. Apparently, the next day, the dailies go to Craig Eve, and he goes, Sam and Eve Winchester hunt what goes bump the night. They don't use umbrellas. So for the rest of 14 years, no matter rain or shine, sun or snow, we were just sitting there going like, yeah. and by the way, we got used to it, but when someone came in for an episode or two or more, they were like, why, why don't we have umbrellas? It's like, ah, you gotta call Eric. Uh, he's, he's strange, uh, as y'all know. But it, it's been a wonderful, I, I'll, I'll, I'll speak for me, but I'll speak for both of us. Neither he nor I raised the way we were raised with, with strong women in our family, mothers, sisters. We never doubted the strength of women, y'all. And, and furthermore, having seen our wives uh, go through childbirth, it becomes very clear we are the weaker sex. Uh, very clear. Um, I was the one throwing up and crying. <laughs> Jim was like, chill out, I'm giving birth. I was like, oh. to work with uh, with amazing people. Yeah, thank you for your question. I, I still want to know what they said about us. Um, he's right. I, I, I will say, just touching on that real quick, that, uh, you know, the the show, the set that, that we were, uh, that we were on for so many years, um, it didn't matter who was walking through the door, um, you know, what, what where they were from, what they looked like, what, you know, how they identified any of that stuff, because they were they were already a part of the team, and it was it was then that it was uh, we that we get to play together, we get to we get to create together, and there were just there's just some people that rose above others, and those are largely the people that you see on the stage this weekend, um, and you know guys and girls and and. The ones that that are still sticking around, still hanging out, talking about this, uh, do for a reason. It doesn't. It, it really didn't matter whether whether it was a 
a male-dominated show or even a male-dominated society. Um, I think it's a, it might be a male-dominated society because you allow us to, to think that we're still in charge. <laughs> but we, we, some of us know that we're clearly not. Um, that being said, it, it was um, it, it wasn't something that we uh, that we necessarily noticed. Um, we didn't see that. We just saw a teammate coming on to the set, and we got to play. And some were just really, really fun to play with, and, and we're still doing it today. So. All right. All right. Uh, in the plaid shirt, blonde hair. There you go. How are you doing? Hi. 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 Oh, okay. So I asked Misha this question yesterday. He got it wrong, I'm no. sure. <laughs> it was a very high answer, and you'll see. A very high answer? Yeah, you'll see. You'll see. Okay. Uh, so. like, <laughs> no, 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 no. He's shorter than both of us. <laughs> How many, seagulls would What's you, that? how many seagulls would you have to find in your house before you started getting suspicious that someone was putting them there? One? <laughs> I live in Lynn, Texas. Um, uh, I haven't seen a seagull in 38 years. Are you putting seagulls in my fucking house? What's going on here? Oh my. I would say 14. Yeah. Thirteen would be like, this is still cool. Because a, uh, <laughs> yeah, a flock of seagulls. It's a great band. It is. It's a great, yeah. band. Yeah. great band. Great band. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, if a door was open, they could have gotten in, you know, but you think maybe maybe there's like six to twelve of them. If there's fourteen, somebody's up. To <laughs> So six to twelve is yeah. pretty cool, pretty casual. Yeah, that's like so also the door. So thirteen, and you become a little suspicious. That's it. Got, 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 got that's it. Sense. Fourteen, you're like thumbs up. Fourteen. What's your answer? My answer? Yes. And why is this question? Why does this question exist? <laughs> it's been in the back of my head. It's been in the back of your head. Oh God, I'm so so curious. Well, what other questions are floating around in there? How many questions are in there before you get suspicious that somebody's putting questions in your head? That's a great question. I don't know the answer. I'm full of them too. I got, I, got, I got a question for you. How many hockey badgers would you need to find inside your house until you were like, something's up? See, that one's harder because I feel like it's all from Florida. So seagulls, we, you know, I mean, like, fair. Yeah, I did, I'm not talking about seagulls. We didn't answer that. I said honey badgers. We don't know. I've never seen a honey badger in my life. So, is your answer one? Are we twinsies? <laughs> did we just become best friends? <laughs> What's your name? Mabry. Mabry? That's, Mabry. Mabry. That's a fake name. Mabry. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, Mabry. Hey, We're now you. going to be discussing this for the rest of the day. So, this is going to be like a song that gets stuck in your head. That after a while you're just angry. Yeah. So if we're cursing you later, it's out of out of love. Honestly. We're gonna we're gonna make a we're gonna make an appointment uh, for Mabry, Jensen, and myself, and all of y'all uh, seagull tattoos. <laughs> but is it just one or is it fourteen? I chose one. You chose you get fourteen. Damn it! I'll get one. All right, moving on. Uh, thank you. I'm gonna go way over here. I see you. Yeah, far, far right. Hi. Hi. First question. How many seagulls would you get? Did you enjoy your whiskey? Uh, not yet. Thank you for asking. Can I give up? Yeah. Yeah, I had it before. Thank you so much. I'm excited. Uh, she gifted us a, like, seven-gallon bottle of Canadian Club yesterday. We have, we have not tried it just yet, but I think I remember it. I drank it last night. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was at the business end of a Canadian club. <laughs> you paused at the wrong time. You said, I was at the business end of a Canadian bottle of whiskey. Grammar is important. Yes, of course. It's more fresh. 
Sure, feel free to answer, Jared. Okay. Um, of all the music that has been released that you've been a part of, radio company, any collabs you've done, do you have a favorite song of yours? Favorite song of mine? Yeah, that you sang, like, I Love Loud the Rain, Just a Man's, Big and Company, oh, Just Steve oh, Carlson. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Angeles. Yeah, I like Angeles because I think that was probably the first time that I like put myself out there. That's it. Um, and and in that way, which was you know a, a little scary, but I had some good, I had some good encouragement from some good friends to do so. So uh, yeah, I, I'd say that kind of holds a little special, special place for me. I remember that day that day you did it when we were uh, on set because I, I did that on yeah. set. The same place we did our uh, voiceover. Uh, the yeah, uh, soundtrack. Don Pancho, who was our uh, sound mixer on on set for all 15 seasons, uh, had a sound uh, soundproof truck that we would go and do our um, voiceover recordings while we were filming. So it'd be on set, and then we'd take a break, and then he and I would hop in there, and we would do uh, you know voiceover work for an episode that we had previously filmed. And I had asked him, I was like, hey, he is also a, an avid collector of like vintage microphones. Um, and I said, hey, uh, I got a buddy coming up here. We're, we're looking to um, lay down some, some vocal tracks for a song. Um, could, we, could we do that in, in the truck? And he's like, oh, yes. And he's like, and I'm gonna go home this weekend. I'm gonna get a couple of my mics, my Neumann, like 572 or whatever, some fancy like vintage vocal recording mic. And he brought it in and he set it up. And, we actually did it while we while I was filming. So yeah. Do you remember who filmed behind the scenes inside the truck? <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some shots from the, the, the music video where yeah, Jared's actually got the got the camera. He's like you know doing this, getting Steve and I. In. And sound and inside of the sound truck, that's basically the back of you all with all the yeah, little, like not much the, bigger than like this drum set. Not big. <laughs> like you can't fit a whole lot of things in there. And also, if you go like this. It picks it up. It picks up everything. You have to so I'm trying to do cool shit, but silent. my my keys are jangling in my pocket. It's like gotta go again. I'm like sorry, like throwing keys. Down. And Jared is, is, is effectively a moose in a china shop. <laughs> I would not get hired as a ninja. Uh, <laughs> for a uh, that was a great thing. Yeah, thank you for your question and thank you for the Canadian Club. Uh, it was delicious. <laughs> With someone that I can try. All you. Uh, let's go down here, front row. That's you, only one with your hand up down there. That's. <laughs> so, in something that you guys spent the last 15 years in, yeah, yeah, yeah. you were hunting things. Procrastinating? Right. <laughs> We get to this hotel that's like a refashioned castle as goes in the UK, and our room is haunted. And Jen, is, we're unpacking, we're jet lag, yeah. and Jen goes, hey, I think our room is haunted. And I just go, I know. And <laughs> we go out to dinner or something, come back, and our curtains are opening and closing, our lights are turning on and off, our uh, uh, bathroom, Light starts leaking water, even though we're on like the first floor of seven or something. So there's no reason. Yeah. And so legit, legit, uh, we're in bed, and I, I just we're laying down, and I just say out loud, I'm like, hey, we see you, we hear you, we know you're here. Can we talk tomorrow? <laughs> it all stops <laughs> until the next day. Sorry. They weren't attention, yeah, so I was just like, hey. I like channeled my inner as dubs. Uh, and I was like, hey, we got you. Uh, we're, we're paying attention, but we're jet lagged. Like, we're all about listening, hearing you, but can we do this tomorrow? And calm. Kirk stopped moving. The rain, like, stops out. It was ridiculous. It was honestly ridiculous. You were talking to God. <laughs> so, maybe, maybe, maybe. I think he has better things to do. Chuck, leave us alone yeah. tonight. We can address this tomorrow. Um, 
Our house in Austin uh, is a, it's, it was built in 1910. Um, and uh, we, we've been doing some um, refurbishing, remodeling and, and stuff with it. And um, some of the workers uh, quit on the job. Uh, and they didn't say why. And the uh, project manager uh, said that they, you know, they, they had to, to go to another, another job or something like that. We then found out that they had seen some things in the th on the third floor. Uh, the, ha the house used to be, I think in the 50s, it used to be a multi-unit uh, place. Multi-unit torture chamber. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently there was a, 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 like an apartment on the third floor of the attic. Um, it had been done like that. So they had reportedly seen something or someone up there. And so Danielle, and of course she knows somebody that deals with this, gets, has this woman come over who is like a medium, clairvoyant, you know, some, like it's straight out of poltergeist, like this house is clear. Like she <laughs> found this woman who came over and they went up to the third floor. I was out of town at this, at this time. I was like, I'm not, I'm not you. go ahead, have fun, knock yourself out. Uh, and they went up there and she was like, Oh yeah, this is where he hurt her. Mm -mm. She's like, nobody died, but this was definitely the energy in here is 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 bad. So there was the drywall was off, so you can see like the uh, you know the, the wall and the studs and everything. It was down to the studs. And uh, don't Wait, say don't oh, say no yeah. stop stop. <laughs> down maybe. I was trying to like avoid the word, and I'm like, I gotta say it, that's what it is, and then I knew that. Dum Dum here was gonna jump on it. Like a bird. You called me again. <laughs> How often do you take this nut finder and go? <laughs> every time, every time. <laughs> <laughs> Jen doesn't think it's funny. I just, no, no, it's hilarious. Um, so, so uh, this woman is the deal. They go over to their floor and, and she makes this this like concoction, this mixture of like uh, of, like a five pound bag of rice and then some other things and trinkets and stuff. And she starts doing some incantations and, and uh, around and then they go out to the, to the porch and they put all of the mixture, the rice on the porch. And Daniel's like, okay, now what? And she's like, well, uh, they'll use this, uh, this mixture to leave the house, effectively, the, the spirits or whatever. And so she's like, okay, thinking, well, now I'm gonna have to come back tomorrow and clean all this up. Um, she gets a call from our project manager, because we weren't there at the time. And he's like, uh, and she's like, or he, he, he was asking her a question. She's like, hey, sorry about all the, the rice and stuff on the front porch. Uh, you can just clean that up. He's like, what rice? Mm -mm, mm -mm. And she's like, what? And we were just down, she was just down the street, so she whipped over there, and it was all gone. And she was like, you didn't have anybody clean this up? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. It, it, was, it was all gone. Yeah, it was, it was actually according to the seagulls. Good call back, good call back. It's good comedy right there. Um, so, I don't know, we're probably still dealing with it. I have another story too, but for another time. Thank you. I'm gonna go back to this sign uh, right here. What is it, the birthday girl? All right. Hi. Another hi. Hi, guys. Hey. Uh, hi. Good morning. Uh, good morning. If you had one song that you could listen to over and over again for the rest of your life with no other music, what would it be? What did you say? Happy V. Applebee's. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do my best. Uh, that probably changes uh, on a semi-regular basis, but I'm gonna go with Hey Jude. What? Hey Jude. Just so much going on on that, you know, it's 
This is just, it's a, yeah, it's an epic tune. What's your answer? Disturbed down with the sickness. Okay. <laughs> You're in here. I'm going over here. <laughs> Thank you for your question. <laughs> Wakes up and puts a hole in the drywall. <laughs> That's breaking shit. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, all right, uh, far back, yes, sir. Uh, yes, with the with the red light you're on. There you go. Um, on that show you're on, there's a lot of spin-offs, and my family loves the repertoire between Bobby and um, Rufus. I was just curious if there was ever discussions about a spin-off show between them. I'd watch it. Uh, I think there was there was discussion about doing something. Um, I don't know if it would have been a, a, a full fledged spin-off, but I think there was like a, a adding another story arc uh, to focus on those two. Um, and uh, I don't know, it, it, you know. A lot of a lot of ideas that get tossed around. Yeah, and I think much of the credit of um, our writing staff, uh, the writers, uh, to your question earlier, uh, and to many questions, part of wonderful storytelling is that everybody in here gets to imagine what happened when the cameras weren't rolling, or what happened when Bobby and Rufus were in Omaha or whatever. So uh, I know I did, and my uh, the story in my head of what they went through is different than all y'all's, but I bet they're all great. And so I think that's one of the magic parts of this 15 year journey he and I got to go through. Because we both got to, we all got to imagine, I wonder what it was like when uh, we didn't see them for a while. So, um, but again, if uh, Jim and Steven decide to share a screen together, I'll, I'll be tuning in. Thank you. Uh, I see you right here. Yeah. yeah, we met yesterday. Awesome. So this may have to do with a role that Jensen just had a cameo, but both of you can answer. Um, what would be your favorite Skittle flavor? Good <laughs> question. I want to do Don't say it all around now. <laughs> you know, I just, I just got the five minute warning. Just, just. 10 seconds ago, and I was like, oh look, we're gonna make it through without one. <laughs> nope. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what is your favorite Skittle flavor? Uh, I don't know. Maybe Skittle Rock. Skittle Rock. Yeah. Skittle Rock. Yeah. 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 Yes. You don't expect it. It'd be like the Harry Potter things where you lose the game, but it'd be nasty. It'd be like sweaty. What? I'm going with musk. Musk. What are you talking about? <laughs> Skittle flavor. I'm creating a new flavor. I, I, Just what your favorite Skittle flavor was, and you're making shit up, man. I'm making shit up. <laughs> Skittles are on strike. You can't talk about it. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, uh, I, not necessarily the, the singular flavor, but the purple bag of Skittles. Yes. I think it's the wild berry. Yes. Beats them all. Yes. Beats them all. And I don't know like specifically which one, because I don't eat them individually. I take handfuls. <laughs> you know, I diddle them around. And I, 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 all right, thank you guys. We're out of here.